Hi, I'm Raisa Licea. I am the attorney at Lucha, that's Latin United Community Housing Association, and I wanted to discuss today fair housing, and not just the Fair Housing Act, but also um, fair housing laws at the local level, and that could be um, the state of Illinois, the county, and the city level, um, and the differences that exist between the protections provided on the federal side by the Fair Housing Act and at the local level by the different laws and ordinances that have passed in the state of Illinois. Um, it's important to note that I am an attorney, but this is not legal advice. If you have a particular case you want to discuss, if you have a set of facts that you're concerned may be a fair housing violation, then I would encourage you um, to discuss these with an attorney. Um, you can talk to them one-on-one -on -one and they'd be able to go over the specifics of your case or you can also reach out to any of the government agencies that we're actually going to talk about right now um, that help uh, investigate and adjudicate fair housing violations. And again, this be at the federal level with HUD, but also at the state level, um, the county level, and with the city. Um, so you have resources, but it's important that you have a one-on-one -on -one discussion of your case so they can give you better information about the specifics of what happened to you whether you have a case and what you need to do going forward um, regarding your alleged fair housing violation. Now, just as a point of comparison, there's a Fair Housing Act um, that's a federal law that prohibits um, discrimination in housing because of certain protected categories. Now, those are race or color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, and disability. And familial status could be if you're pregnant, it could be um, if you have children under the age of 18 and you're seeking housing, uh, both renting or and you're in the process or interested in purchasing a home. Now these are some, uh, we discussed six um, protected categories at the federal level, but it's important to note that fair housing is also protected under the laws of the state of Illinois, um, specifically under the Illinois Human Rights Act. And these six categories that are protected under uh, federal law are also, of course, covered um, under the local laws. But in fact, the state of Illinois and the Human Rights Act give you more protected categories, so more protections. Um, and really, it's if the alleged violation occurred in the state of Illinois, then you automatically would be um, uh, covered under the Illinois Human Rights Act. So what are these additional categories that are protected at the state level? would be sexual orientation, um, age, that's over the age of 40. Um, so for senior citizens or anybody over the age of 40 interested in renting um, or buying a home, uh, marital status, so are you married? Um, are you single if you're a couple um, seeking to rent or buy a home together but you're not married or you are married um, and that is a source of discrimination and that's a protected category at the state level. Uh, your military discharge status and order of protection status. And that last one is um, of particular importance uh, and applies to victims of domestic violence. So all of those are uh, additional categories protected um, under the fair housing laws of the state of Illinois. Some important distinctions to note um, for the state law is if you um, are feel like you face fair housing discrimination by one of these categories that are not protected under federal law, but that are protected at the state level, then you don't necessarily want to go to HUD, right? Because they're not protected under the Federal Fair Housing Act. You're going to want to file your complaint with a government agency um, at the state level, in this case with the Illinois Department of Human Rights. And it's important to note that there is a statute of limitations, so you would have one year from the date of the alleged violation to file your complaint with the Department of Human Rights. Uh, so that's why it's very important to know not just the act of discrimination that you feel that um, happened against you, but the reason why you think. Because if it is one of these categories that are not protected at the federal level, that doesn't mean that you don't have a recourse. That doesn't mean that you don't have anything that you can do about it. It just means that you would have to look at a different law, at a different set of government agencies, um, different courts, if you decide to file a complaint, it wouldn't be at the federal court, it would be at the state court that you could, but you can still um, file your fair housing claim. Now, let's say that your alleged fair housing violation not only occurred in the state of Illinois, 
but it occurred in Cook County. Then you'd also be protected under the Cook County Human Rights Ordinance. You're protected under federal law, you're protected under state law, those still apply, but there's an additional level of protection by the Cook County Ordinance. And in this case, it covers all the same categories that we saw um, at the federal level and at the state level, those apply, but there's additional categories too that are protected uh, by the county ordinance. And that is gender identity, parental status. So if you have, for example, one or more children, or disabled children in particular, that's also an important category um, that's covered under parental status, your source of income, um, and housing status. Now, I wanna just give a little bit of time to discuss source of income because that is something that we see a lot um, in Cook County and the city of Chicago. And what does um, a fair housing discrimination because of source of income means? Um, that means that let's say you wanna rent an apartment um, and you have enough funds to be, and you can show that you have enough funds to cover the rent, um, but it's because of your social, sec social security disability check, for example. And you have a landlord who tells you, well, no, I only accept, you know, W-2 employees. That could be a source of income violation. You can show that you can make the payments and the money that you're receiving from social security disability is just as good as the money that's received by a W-2 employee, but you have a landlord that just doesn't want to deal with that source of income, with that, that source that you're receiving the money, but it's enough to cover the rent that could be a fair housing violation. Another one that unfortunately is, is quite common is if you're a voucher holder, right? If you can show that um, you have a voucher, let's say from the Chicago Housing Authority, that they'll cover a portion of your rent and you're able to, with the voucher, um, with additional income or with just a voucher, that you can cover the rent, but you have a landlord that has a policy, I don't, I don't do vouchers. I don't rent to voucher holders. Some will tell you straight up, others will tell you, oh, I don't, not because of a voucher, but you know, they have a lot of inspections and I don't wanna deal with inspections or I'm, we're not gonna pass CHA inspection. Um, that's a source of income violation. Um, unfortunately, it's quite common, but it would definitely be something that I would encourage if that's uh, something that you faced, that you discuss with an attorney and with a government agency, uh, because we could be talking about an alleged source of income fair housing violation. And that is perhaps not, it's not covered under federal law, but here we have uh, a local county ordinance that is protected for fair housing. Now, if you have this particular type of violation that's covered under the Cook County ordinance, then you would file your complaint with the Cook County Commission on Human Rights. Um, again, you wouldn't necessarily go to HUD you wouldn't necessarily at this point go to the Illinois Department of Human Rights if your particular um, um, protected category is one that's just covered by the Cook County Ordinance. But you can still file the complaint, you can still have your case, um, and it will be investigated and adjudicated. You just have to make sure to go to the right government agency. Now, let's say that you're a fair housing violation that only occurred in the state of Illinois, in Cook County, but in the city of Chicago. So here you have uh, an ordinance that applies the city level, the Chicago Human Rights Ordinance. And that is also protects uh, fair housing. It covers all the other categories, all the same categories protected um, under federal law, state law, and uh, the Cook County Ordinance. So again, um, age, sexual orientation, marital status, military status, gender identity, parental status, source of income, all the same that are covered by the by the ordinance are covered at the at the city level. Um, and it's important then that you uh, can also choose to uh, file your complaint with the Chicago Commission, uh, Chicago Commission on Human Relations if you file your complaint at the city level. Now, some important distinctions between the county and the city is if you file your complaint with the county, the statute of limitations is 180 days. Okay, so before when we've talked about filing a complaint with the federal agency, with HUD, or with the state of Illinois, you had one year from the date of the alleged violations to file your complaint. But if you're gonna file with the county, you have an 180 days. That's about six months. So you have a shorter period of time 
for you to be able to file your complaint. So it's very important that you know the date of the alleged violations and that you move fairly quickly so that you don't have um, a situation where you have a viable complaint. But unfortunately, the statute of limitations has passed and the agency cannot investigate your case any further. Now, if it's a violation um, under the city um, ordinance, uh, and it occurred uh, on or after January 23rd, 2019, then you have 300 days. So you have a little bit more time. If the alleged violation occurred before the January 23rd, um, 2019 date, then it's your regular 180 days. But at this point, um, it, it, for any violation at, under the city ordinance, you have 300 days to file your complaint. Um, and again, it will be with the Chicago Commission, uh, Commission on Human Relations. So we just want to make sure that you understand that there's different government agencies that can uh, investigate for housing violations at the federal, state, county, and city levels. And it's important for you to know where to go because depending on the fair housing violation, depending on the protected category um, that you're making your claim on, that will help you um, sort of navigate um, and decide what is the best um, uh, government agency that you can um, uh, you know, file your complaint with, or if you're gonna file your complaint in federal court, or is it gonna be in state court, um, a lot of different legal elements, or you're gonna file in federal court and incorporate some of the protections at the state level. A lot of um, things that you're gonna have to look into that I would recommend that you always, again, reach out to an attorney, discuss um, you know, the facts of your case, with an attorney or with a government agency uh, so that you have more information on how to proceed, um, where to proceed, how much time you have, and, and sort of um, what are the facts or particulars of your case going forward. And as a reminder, you're more than welcome to reach out to us here at Lucha um, if you wanna discuss your case further and we can always have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about the particulars of your case um, and have a discussion about what are the next steps uh, for you? Thank you very much.